is the South Park Presbyterian Church. This is actually the gateway into Lincoln Park. Uh, in the early 1800s, this area was called South Park. And until Abraham Lincoln spoke on the steps, when he spoke, after he made his speech on the steps, this whole area became Lincoln Park. Uh, as you can look at the church facade, the church burned down about 10 years. It's on a historical register. And what we're doing is cleaning it up and stabilizing it and using the back half acre of green space and making it a green space for the community that we're developing here. I've seen a lot of mayors run up into a green press, press conference and say a whole lot of green stuff. They don't mention anything about the kind of green economy you're talking about. They might talk about a green economy where they don't have any throwaway resources or throwaway species, but you got a mayor who says he doesn't want to have any throwaway children or throwaway neighborhoods either. That's an extraordinary vision from a mayor. We're in uh, phase one of our project for Lincoln Park for housing. And this is, we're gonna take a tour through our uh, mixed use green building. Good morning, Newark. How are you? It's great to be here this morning. Uh, I want to uh, say it's my honor to be here. I want to thank all of you, and I want to thank all the sponsors for, t for participating in this, in this great event. And I want to say that uh, the Apollo Alliance is very excited to be part of this conference and very excited to join with you in building Newark's green future. And this is a great opportunity, a chance to talk about how we create green buildings and green spaces and green jobs and how we put Newark at the leading edge of the green revolution in this country. The Apollo Alliance is going all over this country trying to work with people like Mayor Cory Booker and all of you to build a new national movement to create a clean energy, good jobs economy. Over the next month, we're going to be releasing across this country our agenda for change, an agenda that we hope is embraced at the local level with examples like Newark in the lead, showing the way. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to come on down here and just talk to you for a little while from my heart. I'm going to put my cheat sheet right here. And just let you all know that this, to me, is the greatest city in America because we believe that there was a geographic accident uh, that put Newark on the East Coast. It really, because we believe it's at the center of the fight to achieve the largest, boldest, most audacious dreams for our country. I, I had friends like Van Jones and Amy Christensen who, on a national level, who had said things to me, but I still didn't get it. And so we began, and I have to say, without a green consciousness, we understood that we had to create these bold public-private partnerships. And so we've done some things in Newark that have been revolutionary, in my opinion, and very resonant with the mission statement of our city, because we said that Newark, New Jersey would set the national standard for urban transformation. So we began. Uh, I'm Bracken Hendricks. I'm a senior fellow at the Center for American Progress. We're based in Washington, D.C. We're a national think tank. We do a lot of work on how do you solve climate change? How do you actually make these solutions real in places? Uh, and it became very apparent very quickly that simply having this conversation at a federal policy level is very important. It has to be done, but it's completely insufficient. Uh, and we were looking around about how to really engage in cities. And it's very clear that actually figuring this stuff out in real time, in real places, is really important. And I believe that the country is ready. But hope is a fragile thing. It's one thing to have, an audacious, have audacious hope. It's another thing to have an audacious plan and audacious people who are willing to implement that plan. And that's what you've got in Newark. You very rarely find a mayor that can find a way to hire a sustainability director so that on Monday morning there's somebody on the payroll who's actually implementing all this stuff. And you have that here. We need to provide better health for our residents as well as grow our port. And so I think that it is very crucial that when we talk about 
uh, sustain and meaningful presence and a dialogue and mechanism for public input, we want to help transform the port. And we want it to be uh, very productive as well as we want our quality of life to be better. started working with our city council and we're we bringing this vision forward. We said, if we're going to beat global warming, we're going to have to weatherize millions of buildings so they don't leak so much energy. See, leaky buildings that leak energy, they create drafty, chilly people, but they create a hot planet because the power plant has to work that much harder, put up that much more carbon. So if you're going to beat global warming, you've got to weatherize millions of buildings. We said, weatherize our buildings first and put our young people to work doing it. Give our young people the tools and the training and the technology so they can be a part of solving the biggest problem in the history of mankind. See, let us do that. Let that be the green movement. Green the ghetto first. As Majora Carter always says, green the ghetto first. Let that be what this green movement is. It's not utopia. I don't think I'm going to come back in a year and see you again happy black people in jetpacks, you know, putting up solar panels everywhere, eating tofu. I don't think that's going to be what happens in a year. But it's enough to start. It's enough to start. If you do your work right and well here in Newark, you'll inspire people in Detroit, you'll inspire people in Watts, you'll inspire people in Oakland, you'll inspire people all around the world. You're the only city that if you do it, the whole world will have to believe, that they'll have to believe that a brighter future is possible for everybody. So you get to do more than the politicians. The politicians keep talking about they want to take America back and take America back. If you do your work right and well, for the first time in 40 years, we will take America forward. Thank you very much. With no further ado, Mayor Cory Booker. I'm Mayor Cory Booker, but better defined as a Phil fan, an, yeah. a, an Apollo advocate, uh, and a green go-getter. Uh, we have a lot of challenges here in Newark. We've been doing a great job so far meeting them with courage uh, and determination. Uh, but what I now realize is thanks to the partnership with great people like the Apollo Alliance, other national folks, and a lot of local people, that everything we're trying to do can be supercharged if we have a green consciousness and a green agenda. So as Phil works to create the green revolution, nationally we want to be the front lines of that fight and show that we can create more jobs that we can energize our economy uh, that we can create safer spaces for our children that we can deal with issues from prisoner reentry uh, to helping with our, the health of our children and the the really epidemic asthma rates that we're facing, all of these things can be solved if we approach our issues and our efforts uh, with a green consciousness, with a green agenda. So this is one of those, com uh, those, those uh, conferences that really is the hinge point for the turning uh, of, of Newark and our nation, and I'm looking forward to turning this chapter and starting a new day in America where everybody benefits uh, from, a, from the green American dream.